Hello everyone, I am here with Shorsha. Hello Shorsha, how are you doing today? Hi, pretty good. It's a really nice day outside today, so that makes me happy. Awesome. We're going to be talking a little bit about Disability Pride as well as a project you are working on for a nonprofit to help raise awareness. So for people who are not aware of you, talk a little bit about yourself. I'm Shorsha Pierce. I'm a disabled transgender man. I like to cook. I am currently studying for my bachelor's of education and I make jewelry sometimes. Awesome. So since you are a, a transgender man, so that would mean then for people who are not aware, you were born as a female and you have transitioned to a male and you prefer male pronouns. Is that correct? Yep. I'm currently on testosterone and working towards my top surgery. Oh, that is awesome. That is fantastic to hear. For everyone else who may not be aware, I am a transgender woman. I was born as a male and transitioned to female. So we are essentially the, the opposites of one another. So since you are making jewelry, I'm curious to know, like, how, how long have you been making the jewelry? What got you into the jewelry? Well, I've been making jewelry in general since I was pretty young because I kept being given beading kits. But I started making this jewelry about a month and a half ago because I learned that there's a disability pride flag. And I wanted to be able to show pride in my disabilities and to be able to help other people show pride in their disabilities. That is awesome to hear. And it was something that I was never aware of. I never knew that there was a disability pride. So around... What time does it does it use like the disability pride actually run? Because I know that the LGBT pride is in June. Is the disability pride is that in July? Yep, disability pride month is July, and it's been moved around a bit, but it seems to have settled in July. Okay, so what sort of disabilities then would you are you are you classified as or as you? or you are diagnosed with? I am formally on the record diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Four different doctors have said that I medically qualify for autism, but it's not on my record because there's no real way to medically treat it. And I'm beginning to look into a PTSD diagnosis. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I know, you know, per firsthand, you know, the struggle of PTSD and how difficult that is and for anyone else who is dealing with a lot of this these disabilities whether it be a physical disability or a mental disability it does limit your ability to live a so-called normal life to some degree so I think it is amazing what you're doing to bring awareness to these people who maybe are are not necessarily looked at in the right light or maybe very misunderstood by the general population because a lot of these disabilities that people have whether it be a physical one that you can actually see but i think a harder one is the mental one because you can't actually see that so that's much harder for people to truly understand so i think it is amazing what you're doing there so this project that you're working on making jewelry to raise money for the nonprofit, why don't you share a little bit about that well i started making the jewelry just for myself and my friends. But then I, I remembered at my school, we have internships for part of the capstone for a bachelor's degree of education. And this was one of the ones that came up. I did not end up getting an internship there, but their, their message was important to me and what they're doing is incredibly important. They are open doors for multicultural families. And what they do is provide culturally and linguistically competent services for mainly people of color. They provide it for, for immigrants and refugees in Seattle who often do not have access to care for their disabilities. That includes their languages and their culture. They do this specifically by hiring people from those cultures and who know those languages and having those people c contact them directly. So it's a very peer-to-peer -peer thing. So the jewelry that you have, I see it's different colors. So is there a significant meaning with the different colors of your bracelet? 
there's a significant meaning to everything on here. The black part represents the black field of the disability pride flag, which is mourning for people who have been lost to ableist violence and also rebellion and protest. The zigzag, which I had a little trouble figuring out how to integrate, shows how we overcome barriers and how we can break free from things that are hurting us. And the five colors represent a, a variety of disabilities. Blue for mental illness, yellow for intellectual and developmental disabilities, white for undiagnosed and invisible disabilities. For examples, depression, autism, uh, just not having your disability diagnosed, being in a wheelchair, and being deaf. As someone with bipolar and autism, I would fall under having a mental illness, a developmental disability, for my possible P PTSD, undiagnosed disability, and autism has a large sensory component, so I would also fall under green for sensory disability. There's a lot packed into the meaning of the flag. It really is. Yeah, I was not aware of, I've never actually seen the flag, but it, I guess all of those colors are incorporated into that. Do you have a, a flag next to you here to, to pull up? It was invented by Anne McGill, a disabled woman, and it only came into being last year, but there's a much longer history of disability pride than it. Do you feel as though the disabilities that you have, do you feel as though they, they hold you back from just living to your fullest potential? I feel like it's not the disabilities that's holding me back, but the structure of society. If things were more accessible, if I had access to more resources, then my disabilities would be less of a problem. So how can people find more about the project that you're doing as well as the uh, nonprofit? Well, for the nonprofit, you can go to their website for open doors for multicultural families. They have a very thorough about section and a very thorough rundown of the resources and programs that they provide. They provide a lot of stuff from job training to help accessing education, to help accessing transportation. They do a lot. As for m my stuff, I am under proudly disabled on Etsy is where you'll find my bracelets, my necklaces and anklets. Oh, anklets. Oh, nice. Very good. Okay. So I will have links to, those things for anyone who wishes to check it out. Is there any final words you can give to people, like as a words of encouragement for other people who may be struggling with some sort of disability and who may not be able to or are having a hard time? What, what are your words of encouragement to end this off with? Find your community. Find other people with disabilities. And if you can, with your disability in particular, they will be your greatest allies and they will be people who have coping skills. If you can find older people with your disabilities, especially, they will have so much advice and they will show you that it is possible to survive and thrive in an ableist world, no matter what your disabilities are or what resources you have. There is so much goodness and so many things that you could never have thought of that are out there that can help you and you do need to go out and find them but I promise they're there I promise there are people I promise there are things that will help you those are amazing words thank you so much for them because I know a lot of people feel alone like there's no one else for them and I think that can give them some hope that there are other people that struggle with the problems that they do and they can certainly live a better life if they connect with the right people and they're able to properly deal with their problems. So I want to thank you so much for uh, tuning for uh, joining. I want to thank everyone for watching. Be sure to check out the links. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you so very much.